All right, guys, it's Saturday night, and I'm pretty far into a bo bottle of Porto, so this is going to be the first replay that I try and cast. Well, slightly tipsy, uh, so <laughs> hopefully it'll work out well. If not, uh, we'll see. We're in for a good time. Uh, so I got a Black Dragon, a couple of Cold One Knights, Death Hag on a Cauldron, and Doofire Warlock, some Bolt Throwers, and other random stuff. Malkith on... Uh, Oh, cool one night. And we got Game Master playing the High Elves over here with a Star Dragon, a heavy line of shooting spearmen. And then we have Haldir rocking an infantry core for the Vampire Coast. Mostly just chaff units, going to tie stuff up. He's got a Claw and a Gash uh, isolated. I think maybe that was just a misclick in deployment. Probably he wanted to keep it close to his uh, infantry there and maybe he just forgot. And then we've got. Um, I think this is Dragon Slayer uh, playing the Lizardman, and then Time Lord playing the High Elves as he is want to do, or to do or known to do. I don't know. He's a good. He's a very strong High Elf player in my opinion. And uh, then we've got MR Defender playing the Beastman. So uh, fun scrap between friends and uh, close matchup. Let's get let's get it on. I hit the play button and see how it goes. So what you'll see this is going to be really a a tail of two flanks and then uh, a fight at the end. So Beastmen are going to come in here on the right flank and they will be mostly unobstructed with no problems. And then uh, the Lizardmen are going to be coming in here and I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be dishing it back out on, on this left flank. So we'll see how things go. With the initial engagements here, I've got the bolt thrower shooting in here at the Bastilladon with the solar engine. And there is one, two, three, four, five, count them, units of skinks that are going to be advancing. And they're going to try and tie up my bleak swords and other things, but uh, I'm going to have none of that. So what you'll notice is there's no cavalry near these uh, skinks in their back line. These um, feral cold ones are a little bit far back, so I'm going to take advantage of that and get in a free charge here with my Doomfire Warlocks. I don't have to be too coy with it. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, I don't have to be too coy and get in on the flanks. All I need to do is just hit them and, and, and then withdraw. And look at that, you know, do fire warlocks already. They took off 25% of the health of uh, one of the skink units. More importantly, they delayed these two skink units from advancing, which means that you have now, instead of one solid line, you've got like little bits and pieces of skinks advancing. And that means I can go in and isolate them and um, sort of kill one block at a time rather than having to deal with all of those skinks all at once and uh, it sort of limits their numerical superiority so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to wipe these ones while these ones are uh, advancing and on the right side here um so mr defenders got the centigores they're pitching in on the hexa race and uh the claw of nagash yeah that's a that's a really unfortunate 2k loss there uh but Props to uh, MR Defender for recognizing that and getting Centigors with the great weapons in on there and taking that offline uh, pretty quick. The Lamian Vamp Lord is there, I guess, trying to bail out the um, Claw of Nagash Mortis Engine, but that's probably not going to work out too well for him. We'll check in on that later. In the meantime, the Croxagors have gotten into some uh, Dread Spheres. So the Dread Spheres are anti-large, so they're going to do okay against the Croxagors. They have high melee defense, and the Croxagors have low melee attack, so the Dread Spheres are going to do just fine, hold the out, and definitely trade upwards in terms of cost efficiency. Croxagors are okay if you mix them in with Skinks, but if you have them uh, solo, they're going to get uh, basically... Uh, they're not going to be... You, they're not going to have the meat shield, basically, and you, a lot of the damage that you can put into them is going to hurt them really bad. Meanwhile, I've got the Death Hag, uh, Blade Wind, uh, Bleak Swords, and other things going into the Temple Guard, trying to take those offline as much as possible. And now it's just pandemonium. Everything's just going off here. So we've got a Chain Lightning coming across some Skelly Spearmen. That's uh, not a good use, I think, of the cost of the Winds of Magic. Maybe it was cast elsewhere, but Skelly Spearmen are only worth 300 gold, so... Uh, Chain Lightning is like 18 wins of magic, so maybe that was just a misclick or something like that. I'm not sure. Star Dragon here um, from game is looks like it's going to get pinned by uh, Croxagors, by Skinks, and by a whole bunch of other things. So uh, it's not going to want to stay there for long, so it's going to be pulling out. Bleak Swords are going to clean up some Skinks, and uh, Croxagors are, yeah, just still fighting things out, but... Uh, 
the stegodons found its way into the bolt throwers uh, I do have some cold one nights here that I maybe I just forgot about. I'm not sure what I was doing there. Probably I was just chilling because it was casual match. Uh, Malkith is going to help out, I guess, here with the Temple Guards. I think eventually uh, there was... I think it was chasing off a caster. I don't know what happened to that. But um, let's go take a look at the other side of the battlefield here. So remember that Claude Nagash? That's gone. Oh, no. It's alive. What the hell? Amazing. The superly uh, incredible slick moves of Klav Nagash somehow escapes. And so did the Lamian Vamp Lord. So I don't know how Haldir did that. That was freaking magical. Uh, it escaped. But it is pretty close to his Cat. There is a Manticore coming in. And maybe that's yeah, all she wrote for the Klav Nagash. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty low. It's going to get tanked. And Flamesfire Phoenix are over here. They're going to chase after this uh, Star Dragon, which is good. That's what they should do. It's... The uh, Fence Fire Phoenix are great at um, taking down dragons and individual targets. Source or Blood is getting sniped out. Cold One Knights have found their way onto the Feral Stegodon. They're going to take it offline and uh, give me my Bolt Throwers back. Uh, dragon with the Bleak Sword is going to wipe out the rest of this Temple Guard. And overall, it's looking like the wizard, the Lizards are, are in pretty tough on the left flank. So... Moral of the story is we're winning the left flank. Oh, yeah, so Malkith took out this King Priest of Heaven. So we're winning the left flank. The right flank has been decisively owned by the Beastmen. And now uh, the High Elves are kind of just trading uh, fire. So a lot of the High Elf uh, Sisters of Avalor are shooting into these uh, Flames of Fire Phoenix. I brought over my Black Dragon to support Game Master's uh, Fleeing Star Dragon. But they're, they're taking a lot of damage too here. So some of these archers... But I, I think the archers are shooting into Spearmen, and Spearmen have a 55% missile block chance, so I don't know if they were trying to target the Sisters of Avalorn, and they just... Um... Oh yeah, here, so they are going into the Sisters of Avalorn now, so that is a good a good choice of, of target for them, although the Sisters of Avalorn at this point are pretty low in ammo. Um, Cobalt Knights are active here, they're just kind of cleaning up the rest of these uh, tattered units, did it with the Doomfire Warlock, so things are okay for me over here. Uh, dragons come hunting after the British Shaman of Beasts, but the British Shaman is probably going to be able to escape it. And uh, wisely, MR Defender pulls it into the Centigors with Throwing Axes. So the uh, the Star Dragon is taking a lot of damage here, and he's going to have to pull out. Huge Shaman Lightning going down. Going to do a ton of damage, uh, mostly to Angor Spearmen, though. So not super high value targets, but uh, you know it's going to clear them off the map. Rear Charge going into some zombies from the uh, Centigors with Great Weapons and Centigors. So um uh, you know i guess the zombies are doing their job by taking a little pain but um a few cycle charges should be pretty good there although they are staying at sustained combat so yeah mr defender is going to pull them out there and that's the right decision you don't want to you know it's okay to fight the zombies if you got your uh if you got your charge bonus but you want to be in there in there for longer than you have to black dragon still chasing the fame source phoenix who i did cast word of pain on i guess with my Keith. um so that's good. It's not it's not the regiment around Doomfire Rolex. I couldn't do it with him. Uh, the Doomfire, sorry, the uh, repeater bolt throwers. If you take a look, they're also shooting at the in at the Flames Fire Phoenix. So while it's kiting my Black Dragon, it's also getting shot. I just want to take that unit off the map as soon as possible. Death Hag has cleared out the Temple Guard, and uh, things are getting crunk over here into the uh, High Elf backline. So the Chill guys have made their way into the High Elf archers. They are losing and are going to lose decisively, but uh, they've sort of tied up a lot of units here, so maybe it was uh, not a bad suicide. The High Elf Mage has taken a lot of damage. I don't know how, but it's very low, but it rallied and it's coming back, so that's good news for Time Lord. And uh, Flamesfire Phoenix, that's number two, I think. I don't know where number one is. Eh, maybe it died. It's getting in here. It's going after the, I guess, the Lamian Vamp Lord. So a huge fight going down here. Alario the Radiant with uh, Time Lord and his Flames Fire Phoenix are trying to give it to the Lamian Vamp Lord who has 24% speed uh, and damage resistance and Unbreakable and all this other crazy stuff. But MR Defender is getting in there too. So it's looking pretty tough for the Vamp uh, Lord. Teclis is... Over here, chilling. Flock of Doom. He's going to hit all of these balled up uh, units. So just an absolutely wild fight here. Meanwhile, uh, the Black Dragon and the Doomfire Warlocks have made their way onto these uh, throwing axes. Um, and the Cobra Knights. And Malkith is, yeah, just basically sweeping around the periphery and trying to kind of clean up the edges while this huge mosh pit fight goes down with the vamps. 
Lamia and Vampler is hanging tough though, and uh, yeah, it just it's just anarchy, anarchy everywhere. That's usually how it is in three v three fights. I think the repeater bolt throwers are just right out of ammo, so uh, that's all right. But they did they did work, and the Temple Guard are kind of regrouping here with the archers. So now it's my turn to drop some vortex spells. Blade wind going in here on the Korox man rippers. Uh, balance bar is dead even after ten minutes of scrappiness. Malchus kill count is going up as it tends to do. If he is able to stick around in the in the fight, he's um he's got a ton of vortex spells and I think he's the go-to Lord choice. If you're gonna play a three v three battle, uh, bring out Keith because it tends to be a long battle and uh, he's got so many vortex spells that you'll get a chance to use all of them. In one v one fights, I think the most competitive pick is probably Marathi. Um, Hellebron's a good choice too, and this the regular sorceresses are, are pretty solid. I don't know. I don't think Malkith is optimal, but he's not bad either. Like he's he's still very strong. Um, Black Dragon chasing after Centaurs with throwing axes, not gonna have too too much success there. They're way faster, but uh, you know, can't fault them for trying. A lot of Beastman units have taken a ton of damage from the Blade Wind and the other Vortex spells, so they're going to start uh, piecing out. But uh, Balance Bar is still even. Let's look at, take a look at the troop camp. So our allied troop counts, we're down to 500. Enemies are still at 755, so numerically they are still superior to us. But Centaurs, uh throwing axes have been killed. And the Call of One Knights, which are sort of higher value, I guess, are, are still in line. And the High Elf Archers, they're getting a little bit low on ammo now. So if the Cold One Knights can survive long enough that this, uh, this ammo is depleted, then uh, maybe I can do a little bit of cycle charging action. Full health on my Death Hag, full health on my Akith, and pretty good health on my Dragon too. And so what you're seeing is that basically I've been able to kind of skirt around the periphery and for the most part eliminate the mobility. Uh, and in most fights, my top priority is eliminating mobility. And at this point, I think we have the mobility advantage. This is a big doom bolt going in and on these Korox Man Rippers again. So balance bar is still dead even. This high elf mage is very low, and I wish I would have noticed that earlier. Maybe I could have sent uh, Malkith over here to give her a little love tap, slap her on the butt. You know how it goes. And uh, this Lamian Vamp Lord, what a champ! Like it's tank forever. Tank forever, getting shot up. I mean, Time Lord is pretty smart uh, at trying to, you know, wipe her off the map. But credit to Hell here, doing a little bit of dipping and dodging, uh, trying to just trying to keep her alive as long as possible. It'd be nice if she had a, a evocation of Nahek. I don't know what her winds of magic are at right now, but look at this. Even dodges the High Elf Mage, uh, who she probably could kill, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's probably going to be the end of her. In there with Illyrio, the Radiance, is, it's not looking too good for her. Malkith, full health, though. Cobalt Knight's full health. They're going to uh, take out this last these Ungor Spears. And uh, I sent my dragon in there to help the Lamian Vamp Lord. Actually, it's doing pretty good. The La the dragon is putting in a lot of damage on Illyrio. Maybe it's killing the High Elf Mage. Oh, man, I pulled it back. That was probably a mistake. Uh, I guess I, w I got scared of some Spearmen, but maybe I didn't realize that the Spearmen were... Most there was a few of them on my team, so poor Haldir. He was probably pissed at me. Uh, I probably could have killed that uh, high elf mage and maybe even a Lariel too. So yeah. Oh, but there was the Minotaurs there, so they could have pinned the black dragon. So after all, maybe that was not a bad decision to pull out that black dragon. Meanwhile, the uh, the hag and the uh, Malkith and the two cold ones are into the high elf backline. Uh, they're gonna wipe up the rest of the archers but the archers were pretty much out of ammo anyway so time Lord probably didn't care but big dragon breath going down here on the bit uh, on the ball there so not too bad balance bar dead even still after 12 minutes of fighting maybe slightly in our opponent's favor but uh, we have the mobility advantage and i intend to use it to the fullest so some mr defender sends the butchers of guard after bleak swords they are going to beat the shit out of them but I do have two Cold One Knights. I do have Malkith nearby. So if they get too far from the Spearman and too far from uh, Mal uh, Malgor the Shadowgrave, I'm probably going to be able to come over there and do some damage. And with the shooting offline, that means my Black Dragon is free to pretty much do whatever he wants. I do have a unit of Doomfire Warlocks here, which I, I guess have uh, probably broken off from fighting something and rallied, and I, maybe I didn't notice. Black Dragon just took a chunk out of Valerial's health. Uh, so Time Lord is wisely pulls Alario back through the unit of spears, which is always the the correct decision if you're being gooned by a large monster. But uh, yeah, Cola Knights 
able to clear out the the spearmen with the help of the hag and now it's just the butchers and morgar and they're more or less isolated and malgor senses some blood he's going in here on the brace shaman of beasts oh he faking it out i don't know why i didn't finish it off maybe the frame shaman was too quick maybe i just wanted to support over here oh no okay so malkith was just having a moment of indecision he just he just didn't know what was going on getting a little hyper um so i don't know I, i'm just a bad player don't don't be like me but uh yeah, I guess he's probably trying to hunt that uh, that wizard and just take it offline for good. With the Black Dragon, he has the mass to push through the Chaff Infantry, and he is going to be able to find his way onto the Brave Shaman. Brave Shaman's gone. Death Hag plus Cold One Knights is greater than Minotaur, so that's gone. Uh, Death Hag plus Cold One Knights is greater than Morgar the Shadowgrave because he didn't have the support of his Spearman, so that's going to be punted pretty hard. Dragon plus uh, Teclis. Are going up against Alariel and a couple of spheres, uh, but Malkith is here too, and you know Malkith, uh, Teclis, uh, Black Dragon, they're going to be able to probably put the put the beats on a unit of spearmen. I know spearmen are anti-large, but a dragon is pretty tough beings to deal with. I do have the Doomfire Warlocks, who I still haven't moved because I'm just a bad player. So, yeah, but uh, at this point, I guess maybe I got a little a little bit lazy because I knew things were. Uh, in control for us but uh yeah crazy crazy game lasted about 20 minutes where for most of the fight the balance bar was dead even Malakith was a, a boss even though i mismicred him a few times cold one nights they i mismicred them too but they did okay uh, in the end game master teclas with the flock of dooms he really i think uh paid his value against the beastmen when they sort of uh, balled up a little bit there and uh how dear he, he soaked the damage he said before the fight guys don't worry about it uh you 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 get all the mobility especially you know so i'm just gonna soak damage and uh he did that so props to hell dear for sticking with the game plan the only thing is i think the mortis engine got a little bit caught out there so uh it's, you know only 29 kills on a on a 2k unit uh so unfortunate but you know, he held out for a long time, and his micro of the Lamia and Vampor was fantastic. So, really uh, well played to Haldir. And then Time Lord, uh, you know, he 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 definitely gave us a lot to think about with those flame. Sorry, Phoenix. I don't know if they they picked up those chevrons during the match or if he chevroned them up beforehand, but uh, they were a lot to deal with, and and definitely took the attention of myself in game uh, to try and take them offline. White Lands did okay. Archers were great. Like if you if you're getting you know 70 kills off your archer units, you've uh, gotten good value from them. Alario, I think Alario is great if you're going to take high value units like Phoenix Guard, uh, Dragons, things of that nature. She can probably heal the uh, Flame Spires and give them, you know, like, um, what's it called? False Protection. She can also cast out on the White Lion, so pretty cool stuff there. MR Defender, you know, he got some nice recharges in there. A lot of that was on zombies. Uh, Spearman did okay, but I think maybe drop a few Spearmen for a couple of just regular Gore Herd. Um, to just give some frontline killing power. I mean, Gore Herd can cut up uh, high elf spears, no problem, right? And uh, they do well against most other uh, units, except for maybe Graveguard. The other thing, too, is Ongors are pretty low leadership. So if you're fighting vampire uh, counts, uh, you got to be careful about leadership bombs because they will break uh, on anything that causes fear and terror. And Dragon Slayer, I think, uh, you know, like I, I heard from Embar Defender, he's a, he's a new player, he's learning, so uh, props for jumping into the fire there. He did pretty good. I think the Skinks, they basically their charge got disrupted, so my advice to Dragon Slayer would just be keep the cavalry close to your front line so that if uh, there's some counterplay from cavalry, you could respond to it. And if you kept those Feral one. Feral Cold One's a little bit closer. I think you could have been able to do that. And then try and keep your Croc scores mixed in with your uh, infantry. Uh, so he could have, again, like if he didn't want to put the cavalry there or he wanted to cavalry and the Croc scores, that would have been cool too. But you, you could mix the Croc scores in with the Skinks so that Skinks soak the damage, the Croc scores do the damage, and that would have worked out pretty well. But still done, got into the, into the, um, both throws so that was cool until it did eventually get surrounded by the colon knights but i think if you just want something to ram into bolt throwers you could do it cheaper with a, a regular um 
what are they called feral stegodons i guess uh, i think they're about 750 uh, and then you know the bestilodon it's you want to use its ammo first and then start to ram into stuff but uh great gamut and, and i like the choice of the source of the blood i think it is probably the most competitive this is my pick, other than maybe Mazda Mundi, but uh, yeah, super, super fun stuff. Uh, thanks for watching. 3v3 action. Wow. Take care. Bye.